Hi, everybody. I am Dr. David Proden, and I will be your instructor for Educational Leadership 655 Pupil Services and Non-Discrimination with Viterbo University, the course beginning on Monday, January 13th, 2020. So this is just a very brief introduction to the course, and I have a video tutorial that'll step you through the actual Moodle course, which will follow this short introduction from me. So I have been an instructor with Viterbo since 2003 and also instruct Educational Leadership 702 Superintendent Legal Issues. So let's talk about 655. It's a three credit class completely in Moodle, asynchronous, so we won't have any real-time discussions. However, um, I'm easy to access. You can give me a call. My cell phone number is listed. You can email me. You can text me. Um, if you do text me, just indicate who you are. I'm a student in your class and I have a question or it doesn't seem like this one link is working in class, whatever it might be. If something takes more of an in-depth response, please email me because I don't text very fast. Um, this class is divided into weeks and then also has a research module at the end, which is about six weeks long. So the research module is a time for you to meet with other people, administrators in your district, classroom teachers, students, gather information to inform your final project, which is your pupil services, non-discrimination paper, existing practices at your setting. Now, the benefit of that research module is you're probably going to have your spring break somewhere within that. And it's going to let you go to Cancun or wherever you go without having to worry about class. So it's more of a flexible time. Otherwise, each week there'll be a new less or module, I guess, that will be open. Um, you will then also have a learning team assignment. It's all discussed once I get into the, the corresponding video. So thank you so much for participating in this class, for enrolling with Viterbo University. And before I close, there is one book required for the course. It is School of Errors, Rethinking School Safety in America. The information on the ISBN number is within the syllabus. It's also within this message, the email message that I'm sending to you. Once we get into class weeks two, three, four, there will be required readings and then subsequent questions within the Moodle um, course specific to the text. So you'll wanna make sure that you purchase the text soon. I will email you in the next week and in that email, you'll have instructions on how to access Moodle. I'll have the course completely up. Um, you can go in between January 6th and 12th and just explore it, download the syllabus, do whatever you want. You're not obligated to go to class though until January 13th, Monday the 13th, and then on that day you'd post your biography. Please don't post ahead of time to class. Don't go in and answer discussion questions and and post your biography before January 13th, okay? I'm just opening it up a week early so you can become familiar with it. Make sure that Moodle works on your platform, whatever computer system you're using. It should, right? But if it doesn't, you can also get a hold of tech support at Viterbo. The contact information for that is included in the syllabus attached to this email. Um, Viterbo will make sure that you get your password, your, your username, your login for the course. I don't provide that and I don't have any way to provide that. So you, that will all come directly from Viterbo University. As far as like any tech questions with the course, that would also go to v Viterbo University to answer. If you notice something like a link isn't working, you can let me know and I'll investigate that and probably get that resolved. So again, thank you for enrolling in 655 People Services Non-Discrimination. And stay tuned because now will be the portion of the video where I did a tour of this course in Moodle. So thank you so much. All right, we are here at viterbo.edu and this will 
take you to the Moodle site for the class. So you'll go up to my view, click, and then you'll see email, VitNet, Moodle, Qualtrics, so on. Click on Moodle. Then you'll enter your Viterbo username and password. So again, I will email you directions on how to access Moodle. The university will provide you with your username and password. I don't, I don't do that, but this is what it's gonna look like when you log into class. You're gonna click log in and obviously we're seeing the instructor side of things right now, but I'll move it to student in just a moment. So now if you try to do this right now, um, it's not gonna work because I don't have the class open. The class is built, I'm just doing a few tweaks to it right now, but I will open it up on January 6th. So Monday, January 6th, I'll send out an email and here's instructions on how to access class. You'll actually be able to go in and view the class. So let's take a look. I'm going to change. So it appears like a student. Switch role to, so, so you don't have to worry about student. All right. So when you get in to class, this is what you're going to see. Announcements. And I'll have an intro video, which is the video that you're watching right now. So every time you get to class, you wanna check announcements because I'll have new information that I'll be sharing from time to time. Like I have graded assignments and here's where they are. Your grade book has been updated, for example, and so forth. I would post that right here. That'll always be on the top. You do have one text that you are required to purchase for this class. The book is School of Errors, Rethinking School Safety in America. And here's the ISBN number. So you can purchase that from a range of sites, wherever that works out for you. Also have that information in the syllabus. Moodle student tutorial. So you can see, I'm just scrolling down here. Course syllabus and assignment rubrics. Let's check out the course syllabus. So click here. And this is the syllabus for the course. Always follow the course syllabus. The course syllabus will match each module, each, each week in Moodle, and we'll, we'll see that in just a little bit. Um, they don't 100% overlap, so there might be a few resources in the syllabus of saying, check out this website for more information on whatever. Um, and that might not necessarily be in Moodle. All of the assignments will always be in Moodle. So there won't be anything you'll miss because you didn't read every line in the syllabus. But um, let's go down. So right here, again, the required book, student objectives, links to websites. I found in this newer version of Moodle that sometimes clicking on a link, um, it doesn't appear that it works. And actually the link is still active. So if you copy and paste the link into a new web browser, it will open. Uh, that's happened a few times. So before you click on something and you're like, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't work, um, try to copy and paste it into a browser. And if something isn't working, let me know. I'll go in and make sure that the link hasn't been changed. So you'll wanna follow this, your course calendar, your assignment due dates. So January 6th through the 12th, the course will be open. It's an orientation week. So you're not required to check out the class, but you can go in and explore, you know, kind of what we're doing right now. Just get familiar with, with Moodle, download the resources. Um, but especially if this is your, for, your first class online, It'll, it'll help you out to spend a little bit of time becoming familiar with Moodle. It's very intuitive. It's an easy platform to use. January 13th, class starts. You'll post your biography that day. I've already posted mine. And then we have discussion questions due on Thursday, January 16th. And then also there's an assignment, which is a short assignment 
due on Saturday and learning teams will be formed. There's one learning team project for the class. So if you do have somebody you want to be on the same team with, email me before January 18th. So you can kind of see as we go on, Thursdays the discussion questions will be due. And eventually February 16th, the learning team case study is due. February 29th, the FEMA course certificate is due. So you'll go in to FEMA. It's a free certification course. Uh, it'll take you about three hours to complete how to prepare for um, students and especially students with special needs in a school setting during a crisis situation. You'll have a certificate you'll print off. It's a PDF. Just email that certificate to me and you'll receive credit. Um, it's very important to understand how instant command systems work, how emergency responders interface with schools, especially as we're having more and more intruder drills, more medical events happening at schools, how this impacts students with disabilities and also just students overall. Um, coming down to the research module, March 2nd through April 10th. So this is a multi-week span for you to work on your final project for class, which is the existing non-discrimination practices paper. And it's nice because you don't have a weekly post that you have to make. I encourage you always to check class every few days, but this also falls when most people have their spring breaks between March 2nd and April 10th. So if there's a week that you're gone for spring break, um, you, you can, navigate the class really well because you do have this this multi-week span to work on your last your last project so if you're going to cancun on you know march 10th you're okay with this you don't that week you wouldn't be your 10 days you're not posting to class during that very end that research module be all right so that's that's worked out really well just a breakdown of likely how you're going to be spending your time there's a requirement that there's 7,650 7, minutes in class, but that's between as you're working in class, doing research readings outside of class. This is standard for all Futurbo courses. So let's just move on. A breakdown of how you earn your points for this class, a total of 164 points possible, and then just basic grading um, A down to D. So, you know, 95% to 100 would be an A. As you can see, class participation with your weekly post, uh, that will accrue the most points for you, but you wanna make sure, obviously, that you are meeting all of these. Let's keep going. Little example of how to make a post to class. Uh, I'll be posting also. I'll be answering a lot of the discussion questions, uh, especially in the first few weeks, so I will be participating almost as a student. So you get to see what I'm doing um, and kind of use that to model your own post after. I'll try to respond to as many posts as I can. Now we do have quite a few students in class. So if you make a post, I don't respond to it. Doesn't mean that I didn't read it or like it or anything like that. It just obviously means that there's so many posts I'll be responding to. And once once we kind of get posting back and forth, you know, we can literally have 20, 30 new student posts created in a day. Someone makes a post, someone responds to it, someone responds to that, which is great. So moving us down. Okay, so this is week one. You'll obviously see a week one that will be in the course. Also, we'll get to that in a little bit in Moodle. So you'll want to make sure that you read through this all of these due dates that will also be posted within the class, all these links, uh, most of these links would be in class. Sometimes these links would only be here in the syllabus, but um, this is laid out really well. So then week two, same thing. Here's our major themes, legal parameters of serving students with disabilities and students in protected classes. Here's how it will meet up with your standards for the course. And then obviously most of these things will be found within the course. When your discussion questions are due on Thursday, those will always be in the course. They're not the discussion questions. Um, 
aren't listed in here. And let's just keep going on. So week three, you can see how we do this. Week four, week five, six and seven is together. And then after that, you have your research module. So you do have that group assignment. We were talking about by the 17th of January, letting me know. And right here, so this is the, the team assignments on page 13. Bruce is a second grade boy with a learning disability in reading. He also has a severe food allergy to peanuts. And as you work together with your team members in your group, you're going to be responding to these questions in your paper. Like how might a 504 or IDEA or ADA apply to Bruce? So you'll be looking at probably contacting your school nurse. How do we work with um, the needs of students with allergies? Also, how do we educate other students about uh, allergy, allergy management to make sure that we have a safe school as a, as a pupil services director? Um, how do I also make sure that Bruce isn't put on some table in the corner of the lunchroom that is the peanut free table and there's no interaction with other students and things like that. So um, how, do, you know, how do we plan for field trips to make sure that Bruce can be included in those field trips? But laid out, all of your districts will have a little bit of a different take on how they do this. So you'll come to a consensus as a group and put together a plan for Bruce. But I found when I started as a director of pupil services, I didn't know a lot about allergy management and I needed to learn a lot in a short amount of time because really that was one of my job responsibilities, people services, non-discrimination, making sure that students with allergies, especially severe allergies, had access to the school curriculum, uh, school activities, and so forth. So that's you'll be working right, right off of here when you put that together. Okay, and let's see, that is a five to 10 page plan. Now there's going to be limits, uh, page ranges. So like five to 10, if I, so here's five to 10, make it five to 10. Don't make it 18 pages. So, you know, make sure it's, it's concise. And that's also critical as a pupil services director to almost have a Twitter approach to getting information out to people. We don't want to overload people with very important information. Um, you know, if we can accomplish something in five to 10 pages and convey that information and people receive it and they understand it, that's much more effective than, than just flooding them with here. You know, here's a 15 page document. Here are uh, 10 other links to websites about food allergies and, and whatever, because people just aren't going to be able to handle that. There's going to be too much overload, right? So we want to be very concise, but also thorough. This assignment will focus on that. So anyway, let's get out of this, get back to class, course rubrics. So when you submit things, I will print them off, grade them by hand, scan them back in as a PDF and return them to you. And then at the end of that, we'll have the course rubric. So you want to make sure you are checking out the course rubric. Here we go. Um, well, let's go back to that food allergy one. So right here is the rubric for that. So just that you're touching base, disability awareness and staff education, emergency procedures, consulting with other people, extracurricular. So obviously things that you want to address and yes back okay week by week course schedule okay so this is we saw this in the syllabus week one cyber cafe if you have something you want to share with class but it doesn't quite fit into one of our weekly discussion threads put it here in the cyber cafe a resource saying hey i have this terrific guide make sure that your district says it's okay to share it but we have this terrific guide for uh, making staff aware if students have allergies. And for example, here it is. Or an IP at a glance document, whatever it is. And I'll have some of those that have been posted in class because they've been shared in previous classes by students. Um, technology tips, you know, things like that. Someone might say, how many posts have I made this week? I, I, is there an easy way to check that? 
for example. Someone would come in and say, hey, anybody can answer this. So don't wait for me to, to jump in. If someone has a question on something, go in and do it. So here's week one. So week one, fireside chat. Now, this is the chat from last year. It's just a placeholder right now because I'll be recording the new chat. So when you see this, you'll see the week one fireside chat. Fireside chat will be about 30 to 40 minutes long. I will uh, reference posts that you've made, questions that, that you have. So not everybody, not everybody in class every week will be acknowledged in a fireside chat, but quite a few of you will be. And then also I'll talk about the theme of that week and the reflective teaching annotation, which is kind of like the written lecture, more like in bullet points, you know, which is two, three pages. I'll go through that. And I don't record these um, ahead of time. You know, they, they get recorded right before I open up that module because if something is happening in the state or something on a national level, I want to be able to incorporate it and then also questions that you're providing to me. So I don't have all of these recorded now. They'll be recorded as we, as we go forward. So the week one lecture, reflective teaching annotation. So these are just key points to consider during this week. So and that will be a theme. You'll see that show up in week two, week three. This is a video that you'll be watching, conflated terminology, mainstreaming inclusion, tolerance, acceptance, right here, the right to suck methodology. It's an article I wrote. Very good to understand when you're working with third party providers, um, what the responsibility is of the school, the responsibility of the provider, and also with the whole consideration of people services, non-discrimination, um, included in that inclusion and the other kids timelines of inclusion uh, these are previous assignments uh, by students and other classes that i've instructed for viterbo they've allowed these to be used in this class but when we think about inclusion um, sometimes we don't think about um, inclusion of here dolls for example you know that the first doll to have a visible disability, for example, inclusion in movies, you know, what that looked like, but, you know, there are different Hallmark movies, Rain Man, for example, and it just helps us to think differently, accessible facility design, things, things like that. Um, so here's your biography will be right here, and I've already posted mine, so I would... You would just put your name and then biography, you know, as a as a new discussion topic. Here's mine. So I have a little family photo there. There we are in Dubuque, Iowa. So what you do is you might respond, you know, to me, hey, glad to meet you. You know, we've we vacationed in Iowa also and, and whatever. So um but you don't have to to respond to me and to everybody else. But there's the option to to make a response, and I'll respond when you post your biography. I'll respond to each of you. So we have the week one assignment: post your district special education percentage. How many students are identified? For example, learning disability. How many students speech language OHI? If you've observed any patterns, what patterns are you observing? So. That will be easy data to obtain either from your current special education director, the DPI website. Your school would have submitted that, your district back in October for basically your special ed count. And that's how you get money for flow through dollars uh, from the Fed. So yeah, that data is, is easily accessible. You just have to find the right person. And then just, you know, hey, what do we have? Do we have trends? Are we seeing more OHI, other health impaired? And if so, what, what, what's happening? OHI, okay, maybe more students are diagnosed with anxiety. Or are we seeing a decrease in yeah, speech language? And if so, okay, well, hey, something happened a few years ago. We added more um, literacy. We expanded out our library, more early reading and, and we incorporated some phonics instruction, kindergarten, and that might be you know, making, making this difference. It might be causal. So, But you want to be familiar with what your percentages are, your data. That's what I'm asking. So right here, 
discussion question one. Again, this is Thursday the 16th. So it's there. I don't want you to work ahead. Don't post to these until class starts. So again, that week you can go in the 6th through the 12th of January. That's just to become familiar with class. Don't start posting though until Monday, January 13th. So there's another discussion question. Okay. And then this is optional, you know, reactions to working with third parties. So basically, you know, you want to be making, you have to respond to these, but you need to be making eight posts in a week so you can respond to these. You can respond to posts that other people have made, posts that they've put for their discussion questions. It'll become very natural once you observe it for a couple days in your thoughts and reflections. So also the fireside chat, once you watch, after you watch the fireside chat, you can leave your reactions. So that's all that you see right now, right? So now this is week one. The class is, has already been built. I have week two, week three, it's all in Moodle. You won't see it though, until we progress into week two, week three, week four. Then I'll open up new weeks. So once we get to, um, let's say, Monday the 20th, so that morning or the, the day before, I would go in and I would open up week two. So all of a sudden you'd see week two. That'll be up on top. Now week one will, will always stay here. Everything that I've posted will stay. Nothing will disappear. So... But once we get into week two, then start posting in week two. Um, don't keep posting in week one. Uh, move on and, and start your post in week two. And I want to show you, before we get out of here, I'm going to go back to my instructor role so everything appears. And here we go, normal role. Okay, so student learning teams this will suddenly appear on the 20th of January. So there are four teams, the Didactic Dojo, the Recess Ramblers, Matriculation Roundtable, and the Fastasticans. Now, I'm not sure that I will use all four teams. It depends upon the final enrollment in the, cl in the class. We might just use three teams, but then you'd be assigned to a team. You would, this would all be, again, visible. You would post your information, how you want to be contacted by other people in the team. And then basically, whatever way that you get together, if it's yeah via Skype call or if you're just going to email back and forth or phone conference, whatever you do, to put together your final paper. You're going to determine your division of labor. Okay, you're going to work on this section, this section, you know, whatever. So, like you haven't done that before, right? Um, but yeah, that will that will appear. So, and don't say I want to be you know in didactic dojo. Just say here's another person I want to be with if that's what you want. You know, sometimes people from the same um, district you know want to work together, and then I would assign them likely to the same team. But just let me know. So I'm gonna get us out of here. Okay. All right. So now we're back. So again, this is just a tutorial to help you become familiar with Moodle, check out the syllabus, make sure that you obtain the book.